this is Ms. Leon, and we are going to have a first read of the story Red Roses from the My Perspective Grade 8 textbook, Unit 1, Rites of Passage. For this reading, you just have to listen to Ms. Leon read the story and read along to get the gist of the plot. Remember, strong readers are re-readers. We will return to this story a few times. When I was in middle school, what I wanted most was to fit in. That's all anyone wants in middle school. In middle school, you're suspicious of anyone who stands out for any reason. Derek stood out. We all avoided him. My mother had always told us never to make fun of people, so I never did. I can't say the same for my friends. Not that they were outright mean or anything, but they'd whisper behind their hands and it was obvious who they were whispering about. I took no part in this, as I said, but I have to admit I steered clear of Derek like everyone else. Despite my standoffishness, Derek started leaving me little gifts. Every couple of days, something new. Treasures out of a cereal box or a gum machine would turn up in my locker, in my desk, in the pocket of my jacket. I did not acknowledge these things and immediately tossed them into the back of my closet when I got home. I guess I could have told my mother, but I didn't. Sometimes you have to figure things out for yourself. The weeks passed. I continued to ignore Derek and made sure to stay out of his way. Still, the presence continued, a different one each time. I resented the fact that he spent so much time thinking up ways to get my attention. Didn't he have better things to do? My friend teased me. Ooh, Lila has a boyfriend. Lila has a boyfriend. They sang out. It didn't seem fair. I tried so hard to fit in, to fade into the woodwork. But here I was, being teased, the butt of a joke, the center of attention. One day, Derek strode up to me in the lunchroom and presented me with a dozen roses. Red long-stemmed in a fluted paper wrapper with a note tucked inside. I know I'm not the coolest kid, but take these roses. You'll be glad you did. I should have been flattered, but I was good and angry. The fact that he stood there, grinning lopsidedly, roses in hand with that hopeful look in his eyes made me even angrier. I wanted to squash him like a bug. Leave me alone, I growled. Don't you get it? Go away! Oh, sang the chorus of girls. I wanted to crawl under a rock. Derek looked as miserable as I did, and then, horrors, I saw his bottom lip quiver. He looked like he was going to cry. He couldn't cry. If he cried, they'd call him a crybaby. Derek is a crybaby, would follow him around for the rest of his life. I decided I would not, could not let that happen. No one was going to make me, not even my friends. I took the roses. I carried them around all day. I never did talk to Derek after that. We nodded politely to each other in the hallway, but I never pretended to like him, and he never gave me another present. Somehow we'd worked it out. I lost track of Derek when his family moved away. I guess you could say this was the first time I did something I didn't want to, just to protect someone else's feelings from getting hurt. Maybe you could call this growth or maturity. I honestly don't know. Even though it happened a long time ago, I can picture myself on that day striding through the corridor proudly, the dozen roses clenched tightly in my hand, walking tall, feeling like no one could touch me. <laughs>